People from across the region were in Pikeville for this year's SOAR Summit. A doctor is arrested on assault and terroristic threatening charges, and police are searching for a missing Floyd County woman. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week, I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. The eyes of the mountains were on the East Kentucky Expo Center Friday as business and government leaders joined concerned citizens to talk about the region's future. EKB's reporter Shannon Deskins has a look. More than 1,100 attendees spent the day at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville for the 2017 SOAR Summit. And these summits are ways for us to share ideas and bring together people. And you know, you got probably 50 or so counties represented here. So it's really the eastern half of the state of Kentucky. Congressman Hal Rogers, Governor Matt Bevan, and UK basketball coach John Calipari were just a few people who addressed the crowd, looking at both where the region is going and how far we have come since SOAR was first launched. In four years, we've seen thousands of jobs created, and we have a blueprint now, a plan for the future of Appalachia. No longer are we talking about what's wrong or what should we do. This year we're saying, here's what we're doing, here's what you're doing. We've got a thousand people who aren't just here to talk about it, they're living it. One of the biggest announcements made at today's SOAR Summit was an ARC grant for $200,000 to the Southeast Kentucky Economic Development Corporation to help 12 Eastern Kentucky companies become ISO certified. That alone will do a lot to help them become eligible for government contract work, but there was still more good news. Um, there was also, they opened up the next round of AML funding um, for $25 million that these communities can apply for to fund some of the programs that we're talking about here. Uh, so lots of exciting things today for sure. If you look at Tech Hire, if you look at the, uh, the Appalachian Wildlife Center that's being built down in Bell County, if you look at App Harvest and this new partnership with Sunset and they're looking at building greenhouses across Appalachia. But announcements aside, SOAR officials say many future economic development projects undoubtedly will happen because of a connection made here today. I meet one person in one county and a project in another county and I see those dots. It's like, you guys should know each other and you don't. And then I make the introduction and get out of the way. That happens all day here today. Reporting from Pikeville, I'm Shannon Deskins for EKB News. Congressman Hal Rogers made a stop in our area this week and he came bearing gifts. I caught up with the congressman during his trip Wednesday. Congressman Hal Rogers announced a number of grants today for Floyd and McGoffin counties. They include $1 million to Prestonsburg for an expansion on their wastewater treatment plant, nearly $2 million for a new rails to trails project from Prestonsburg to David, and nearly another $2 million in support of the Royalton Trail Town project. We're going to use that money there in Royalton Trail Town. We're going to use it in 15 acres along the Dawkins Line Rail Trail. And it's going to give places for people to stay, activities. We'll be having different things available there in that bottom. In that way, that will change the Dawkins Line Rail Trail because right now people will come to it more because they're going to have something to do when they come to Royalton Trail Town. And they're going to have some place to stay and that's the biggie. Prestonsburg Mayor Les Stapleton is excited for the new rail trail to David, but he says he and Victoria Doucette have a long-term goal in place. I know you've already talked with Vicki Doucette from uh, Royalton Trail Towns. We're only about six and a half, seven miles from them. We're already working towards trying to join with them. Make this a complete circuit. Make it somewhere so they can enjoy both their rail trail, both our, our city, and the Dawkins Trail. Our goal is 100% to move forward, try to get tourists in here, get people in here interested. Once they come here and see how much we got to offer, they want to live here. When they want to live here, they bring jobs. It's a process. It's just going to take us some time to get there. The road to today's projects becoming a reality began two years ago when Congressman Hal Rogers earmarked a $195 million bill to help projects in five different states that were hit hard by the decline of the coal industry. You're clearing a piece of property, restoring an old coal mine that's going to be used for a shopping center. So this will allow you to build sewage to it and water and grade it down, perhaps build a road, that type of thing. 
abandoned mine lands reclamation with a job producing impact. Uh, and so Kentucky is sharing in that money. The, the state decides where it's spent. They'll spend it on local projects like the ones we've mentioned. Another bill Congressman Rogers is supporting is called the Reclaim Act, which is similar to the abandoned mine land pilot project. For more information on the Reclaim Act, visit halrogers.house.gov. Reporting from Prestonsburg, I'm Sean Allen for EKB News. A Prestonsburg doctor and instructor at the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine was arrested for allegedly stabbing his lover. 51-year-old Dr. Peter Zajac is charged with assault and terroristic threatening. According to the warrant, he was arrested for allegedly spitting on, cursing, and stabbing her in the shoulder. And he also threatened to cut her jugular vein back in March. The warrant describes the victim as his paramour and a stage 4 cancer patient at Highlands Regional Medical Center. Zajac is listed with the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine as an Associate Professor of Family Medicine and Director of Clinical Skills Training and Evaluation. Officials at the University of Pikeville said the school is aware of the arrest and that Zajac has been suspended pending an investigation. The parents of a Belfry High School student who was sexually abused by a school janitor has filed a federal lawsuit against the janitor, as well as the principal, superintendent, and the Pike County School Board. In January, 61-year-old former janitor Jerry Swafford pleaded guilty in Mingo Circuit Court to one count of sexual abuse. He was sentenced to one to five years in prison. In court, he admitted to spiking the girl's drink with a prescription sleeping pill, then having sexual contact with her after she passed out. The incident happened during a party at Swafford's, who had thrown that for himself for his birthday. The lawsuit alleges the party was just one of many similar parties Swafford invited students to while supplying them with drugs and with alcohol. The parents say school and district personnel were aware of Swafford's actions but took no action against him. In particular, they point to a 2012 incident in which they say a co-worker allegedly discovered Swafford alone in his office engaged in an indecent act. The parents claim that by not disciplining Swafford, school officials implicitly condoned his sexual misconduct with the students. They are seeking punitive and compensatory damages, as well as reimbursement of their legal costs. A burglary spree through a Pikeville neighborhood left numerous residents with damage to their vehicles and their wallets. Now police are publicizing the suspect's face in hopes of the solving the case quickly. EKB's Shelby Steele has the details. The Pikeville Police Department is asking for the public's assistance in locating a man believed to be involved in a string of burglaries at the Bulls Edition in Pikeville and the Pikeville Walmart. According to police, the male subject broke into several vehicles in the neighborhood, stealing cash, guns, and other items. The value at this time, I think they reported four to $6,000 taken from multiple vehicles, as well as four handguns. Police add the subject has been seen several times in the same vehicle. However, it's unknown if he owns the vehicle. He has been seen in a black Nissan Altima, uh, ranging from year 2009 to 2012, something of that nature. Uh, it's 10 windows. We don't have a license plate at this time, but we're still, the you know, investigation is still ongoing. The burglaries happened in the early morning hours of July 23rd. The gentleman does have some type of uh, tattoo or something on his right wrist. We're just asking the public to come forth with any information. You can remain completely anonymous throughout this whole process. We just need to apprehend this, this suspect. If you have any information regarding the burglaries or the person of interest, call the Pikeville Police Department at the number listed on your screen. In Pikeville, Shelby Still, EKB News. Kentucky State Police are asking for your help finding a missing Floyd County woman. 42-year-old Raquel Renee Kane of Prestonsburg was last seen in Floyd County driving a 2013 Toyota Camry. She's 5 foot 6, weighs 145 pounds, has blonde hair and blue eyes. Anyone with information on her whereabouts is asked to contact Kentucky State Police or your local police agency. Coming up, a legend in Pike County politics has died and West Virginia's governor makes national news. All that and more coming up next on This Week.
Attention nurse practitioners, if you want to spend more time with the family, the perfect position is available as PMC is hiring for school nurse practitioner positions. You can work while kids are in school and be off in the summer with pay starting at over $38 an hour and an excellent benefit package. To learn more, call Allison Lovely with PMC Recruitment Services at 606-218-4915, 606-218-4915, Pikeville Medical Center, an equal opportunity employer. Drivers, start Start your engine. Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome Lonesome Pine Pine Raceway, Raceway. Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. We are so thankful for Logan Regional Medical Center. It was so close to where the event happened. It was overall a bad day, but Logan Regional Medical Center was was a really good part of that day. Logan Regional rocks. After I got out of the hospital with my uh, heart surgery, uh, I did my cardiac rehab here at Logan Regional Medical Center. And it was very convenient getting here and then getting back to work. Logan Regional Medical Center, always here for you. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast, or made-to-order omelets, or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rules. A staple of Pike County politics over the past several decades passed away this week. Former Pike County Clerk Lillian Pearl Elliott died Monday morning. Elliott served the Pike County Clerk's Office for 70 years, including nearly three decades as clerk. Current clerk and former deputy clerk under Elliott, Rhonda Taylor, said Elliott ran a tight ship but always treated her staff with respect and love. She wouldn't make you walk the line. Uh have the utmost respect for her. She was well loved. Not only in this office, but you know, throughout the whole the whole county, everybody loved her. She was here since she was she said she was almost sixteen years old when she took a job with the clerk's office and she was here for seventy years. Uh, I mean that's remarkable to be at one place for seventy years. And I really enjoyed serving under her. She taught me a lot. Um, she was just a remarkable woman and she'll dearly be missed, not just by me, but everybody that's worked for her in the past, everybody that knew her. Lillian Pearl Elliott's funeral was held Wednesday. She was 91 years old. In other political news, West Virginia Governor Jim Justice switches parties from Democrat to Republican seven months into his term. Today I will tell you with lots of prayers and lots of thinking, Today, I tell you as West Virginians, I can't help you anymore being a Democrat governor. So tomorrow, I will be changing my registration to Republican. Justice made the announcement during President Trump's rally Thursday evening in Huntington. Justice has not emphasized party affiliation during his time in office or during his campaign. He did not endorse Hillary Clinton for president, and he has spoken in glowing terms about President Trump. This is not the first party switch for Justice. He changed his affiliation from Republican to Democrat in early 2015, just a few months before he announced his run for governor. Ground was broken this week on what the city of Pikeville hopes will be its newest tool in attracting industry into the region. EKB's Chris Anderson has the details. The city of Pikeville is still waiting for the first tenant at the Kentucky Enterprise Industrial Park to break ground and populate the park. But today the city broke some ground of its own at the park. Officials broke ground on a speculative building, a building they hope will attract a tenant ready to get producing immediately. The Cabinet for Economic Development had advised the city 
that uh, we needed to construct a spec building to attract potential tenants. They, apparently tenants want a facility that's constructed with just mod moderate modifications uh, and they're much more likely to locate in your business park. The building will be built in part using abandoned mine lands funds, funding help secured by Congressman Hal Rogers. You know, the 5th District has been blessed to have a congressman that has worked with us across party lines uh, to make sure that we have the infrastructure that we need to be able to compete in the 21st century economy. You've got to build it and they will come. Uh, you've got to have a place where companies that are either starting out or expanding an operation somewhere else can move into immediately. Uh, and this building is designed so that it can be adapted uh, by different needs, small, large, integrated, whatever. So this is the, the way to go. This is the new way to attract industry. The Commission's vision for the park is manufacturing, information technology, uh, aerospace, so that is certainly our intent is to attract one of those industries. Pikeville City Manager Philip Ellswick said he anticipates dirt being turned over on the project in early fall, beginning an 18-month construction process. In Pikeville, Chris Anderson, EKB News. Coming up, we'll take you to a drug roundup in Martin County, but first, EKB TV Sports Director Michaela Colley will be in to look back at the week in sports. It's coming up next on This Week. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation. Earning the number one ranking from U.S. News & World Report as the top hospital in America really affirms two things. One, it affirms the quality of the practice at Mayo Clinic, and secondly, it affirms the male model of care. Pikeville Medical Center is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, PMC, and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. The Southeast Chamber of Commerce 60th Annual Awards Banquet Dinner will be Thursday, August 17th at 6 p.m. at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville. This year's banquet will feature entertainment by a local favorite, the Artists Collaborative Theater. Gluten-free and vegetarian meals are available by request prior to the dinner. If you're interested in attending the Awards Banquet Dinner, contact the Chamber Office at 606-432-5504 or visit sekchamber.com. We are so thankful for Logan Regional Medical Center. It was so close to where the event happened. It was overall a bad day, but Logan Regional Medical Center was, was a really good part of that day. Logan Regional rocks! After I got out of the hospital with my uh, heart surgery, uh, I did my cardiac rehab here at Logan Regional Medical Center. And it was very convenient getting here and then getting back to work. Logan Regional Medical Center, always here for you. The Martin County Sheriff's Department were out in full force Thursday making the streets safer, searching for 18 suspects indicted by a Martin County Grand Jury. I had the opportunity to get in on the action and ride along. The Martin County Sheriff's Department conducted a roundup Thursday after a Martin County Grand Jury handed down 18 indictments. Many of those indictments were drug related. Martin County Sheriff John Kirk says there's a misconception among drug addicts that the department is out to hurt them, but that is just not the case. We're here to help. We're not here just to arrest you and take you to jail. It doesn't end there. Uh, you know, we, we work with a lot of people, try to help them get rehab, and, you know, we're all human. It could be my child that, you know, nobody woke up this morning, you know, and said I'm going to be a drug addict. It slipped up on them. So, um, you know, we're just trying to do our job, trying to make a, the street safer for the drug dealer, for the drug addict, for the, for the children. But we do have to hold the drug dealers accountable, and, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the job. Sheriff Kirk went on to talk about how vital anonymous tips are to his investigations. Without the help from the public, uh, a lot of these people, you know, we would be forever trying to arrest. There will be people, uh, when they see this, they will call us and, and tell us where these people are at and that's what we need. 
So far, five of the 18 suspects have been picked up. They include 31-year-old James Setzer, 39-year-old Kenneth Shoptaw, and 29-year-old Christopher Millett, all of Tomahawk. Also, Ray Markham and Christopher Bowen, both of Inez. If you have any information of any type of illegal activity in your area, you can call the Sheriff's Department anonymously at the number listed on your screen. Reporting from Inez, I'm Sean Allen for EKB News. Now, for one last time on this week, we'll go to Michaela Colley, who's leaving us to pursue other opportunities abroad. Here's Michaela Colley with the Week in Sports. Football season is gearing up around the area with media days, player move-ins, and preseason rankings. This week, the Kentucky Wildcats hit the field for their annual media days at Kroger Field. Last year, the Wildcats finished at 7-6 and six and made a bowl game appearance. Stoop says he is happy where his team is and continues to see growth. Here's Coach Stoops' comments. I really like where we're at right now compared to last year. Um, I just feel like the, the ownership, the, the leadership is much stronger, and, and it should be. Again, I, I say it every year I'm here when you guys ask me, you know, my expectations and all those things. We expect to be better. We should be better. We're going into year five. We ought to be better in all areas. And you've heard me talk about it many times. I mean, we're bit build, 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 build a winning culture, build a strong football team, select the right players, and then intentionally develop them when they're here. In preseason polls, the University of Pikeville team has picked up to finish second in the Appalachian Mid-South Conference. Summer camp begins next week as athletes continue to arrive on campus. We caught up with head coach Al Holland Jr. as well as freshman newcomer Darren Morris from Paintsville. Today's an exciting day for our football program. All of our guys get on campus. Uh, 129 guys reported today to check in. Uh, that included our summer guys uh, that have been here for the last month. Uh, you know, the mid 40s have been here. Uh, you know, every single day working out uh, in the month of July. So that was a big number for us, having uh, you know a third of the football team here uh, being in tip-top shape going into this camp. So. Uh, it's big for all of our guys. You know, today's uh, acclimation day for them. They uh, get checked in their dorm rooms. Uh, we get all their physicals, drug testing, all that kind of stuff gets done today. And, and that gets behind us uh, tomorrow. Uh, we get to really get into our meetings and sitting down with each kid and, and learning that playbook one-on-one -on -one and uh, getting ready for our first practice on Friday. But I came up here to, to help the team and, and you know, try to lead them to success as they're trying to lead me to success. Uh, I can't wait for it. I mean, I've been waiting all summer for it. Uh, it's been a while since I've put pads on and, you know, I just, I'm ready to just go out there and, you know, show them what I got. On Thursday, Congressman Hal Rogers gave his congratulations to Belfry head football coach Philip Haywood for picking up the honor as the NHSACA National Football Coach of the Year. For being named the National the National High School Athletic Coaches Association's Coach of the Year. I've had the greatest assistant coaches in my career to help me be able to stand here today. And we've also had tremendous players that have been able to buy into what we do. You know? And I've just been surrounded by a great community, a great school, great people uh, from the bottom to the top because no one ever has success without the help of other people. This is my final show with EKB. It's been a pleasure bringing you guys the sports over the last couple of years. Stay with us, weather is up next. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation and the number one hospital in eight specialties by US News and World Report. As a result of these outstanding rankings, Mayo Clinic was named to US News and World Report's prestigious honor roll. PMC is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Drivers, start, start your, your engine. engine. Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome, Lonesome Pine, Pine Raceway, Raceway, Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. 
The Southeast Chamber of Commerce 60th Annual Awards Banquet Dinner will be Thursday, August 17th at 6 p.m. at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville. This year's banquet will feature entertainment by a local favorite, the Artists Collaborative Theater. Gluten-free and vegetarian meals are available by request prior to the dinner. If you're interested in attending the Awards Banquet Dinner, contact the Chamber Office at 606-432-5504 or visit sekchamber.com. A state program that helps approximately 150,000 Kentucky families pay their heating bill each winter is at risk of losing funding. Attorney General Andy Bashir joined other state attorney generals and consumer advocates in calling on congressional leaders to preserve and expand funds to the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP. Bashir said the U.S. Department of Energy's Weatherization Assistance Program's funding is on the chopping block in the proposed federal budget. Nationally, LIHEAP is expected to assist nearly 6.1 million households in the current fiscal year. Now let's check in with EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins for a look back at the week in weather. Thanks, Sean. A typical summer week across the region. On Monday, we started the week with temperatures in the mid 80s, mostly sunny skies. Much of the same on Tuesday, mostly sunny, 84. The overnight lows gradually warming up from the low 60s into the mid 60s. On Wednesday, a few showers and thunderstorms. Nothing in the way of rainfall in Jackson, but we did have a couple of those out the landscape, especially of eastern Kentucky. We go to 86 degrees for the high, 87 on Thursday. Jackson, again, dry, but over in Martin County, picking up an inch or two of rain in a short period of time, and it did prompt a flash flood warning. Big changes started to move in on Friday. Temperatures dropped into the 70s, and that is going to shape up a beautiful weekend across the region. Sean will be back in in just a couple of minutes with more this week. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation. Earning the number one ranking from U.S. News & World Report as the top hospital in America really affirms two things. One, it affirms the quality of the practice at Mayo Clinic, and secondly, it affirms the male model of care. Pikeville Medical Center is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Drivers, start, start your, your engine. engine. Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome, Lonesome Pine, Pine Raceway, Raceway, Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. The Southeast Chamber of Commerce 60th Annual Awards Banquet Dinner will be Thursday, August 17th at 6 p.m. at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville. This year's banquet will feature entertainment by a local favorite, the Artists Collaborative Theater. Gluten-free and vegetarian meals are available by request prior to the dinner. If you're interested in attending the Awards Banquet Dinner, contact the Chamber Office at 606-432-5504 or visit sekchamber.com. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast, or made to order omelets, or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rule. Here's a couple of events you may be interested in for the upcoming week. The Regional Farmers Market Celebration, hosted by the Pikeville Farmers Market, will be held Tuesday, August 8th from 4.30 until 7. In addition to farmers, crafters, and food vendors, there will also be a special presentation by the Pikeville High School Junior Chefs. And the Hazard Rotary 12th Annual Gala, will take place Saturday, August 12th, beginning at 6 p.m. The awesome 80s evening will be held at the First Federal Center. Tickets for the event are now on sale. For more information, search for the event on Facebook. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6.30 p.m. right here on EKB-TV. 
For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.